Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, respected teachers, all my dear colleagues, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I'm Dr. Amna Mavish and I'm going to discuss with you the functional facial anatomy for fillers. So uh, today the concentration or the target of the fillers is the aging phase, as you already uh, know and discussed and told by Dr. Kalsoma as well. Uh, while correcting, you can see there are a lot of changes present in all parts of the face. It is not a disease, it's a natural process which we all have to pass. But while correcting it, you have to uh, uh, know and you have to keep this thing in mind that you should restore the natural anatomy of the face and you don't have to change it. You only want to correct the changes of aging, but you don't have to change. That is the target that is desired. So, uh, as you know that there can be a lot of complications of the fillers and uh, there are many good materials and uh, a lot of good methods, techniques as told by Dr. Kulsom nowadays available. So, most of the complications that occur nowadays is because of the uh, having less knowledge and being negligent about the facial anatomy and the vital structures that are present in different areas of the face. These are the layers of the uh, skin, the soft tissue, which you can see that there is the skin, then there is a connective tissue layer, there is the aponeurosis or the spas layer, then comes the loose connective tissue and then there is the periosteum and below that is the bone. So even if you learn a lot of anatomy, you should know that in general rule is that the two areas on the face are comparatively devoid of mostly the vital structures. These areas include the hypodermis area and the supraperiosteal area just above the bone. Again, uh, this layer, same layer continues from the scalp towards the uh, face as well. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of... Uh, 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 deep fat compartments, the ligaments of the face, you very well know these things, they become lax with the age and there occurs drooping and sagging of the face because of the loosening of the ligaments and then herniation of the fat. So this is the way the normal, uh, the retaining ligaments, they maintain the uh, elasticity and they mean the vitality of the skin and their uh, loosening and their, uh, with the passage of time, their laxity that leads to the facial aging changes. So uh, these are the mainly the fat compartments, fat compartments of the face. Uh, you can see they are very important because uh, previously when people used to only consider the vascular and the nervous structures importantly and uh, avoiding the danger areas, they used to create the bagel faces and that was because uh, they didn't keep in mind the different forehead fat compartments. These are also important when you have to inject and you have to increase the volume of the face. There, you know that the facial volume, it regresses and reduces with aging. Again, in the, uh, the mid face area, the zygomatic uh, area that is also very important because the medial and the lateral um, medi me uh, cheek fat compartments that are present here. The pre jowl fat compartment again its laxity gives rise to the pre jowl sulcus. Uh, these are the skin thickness present on the different areas of the face. Uh, because there are many areas, especially the danger zones, so called the danger zones of the face, you have to keep in mind the uh, different thickness uh, areas of the skin because you have to be very superficial in few areas. Superficial uh, up to the extent that you can, you should even know the needle or the cannula. You can feel it uh, if you are injecting it in the hypodermis. The different groups of muscles. Uh, present on the face. Uh, these uh, are you definitely know more important for the botulinum toxin but uh, these are also important for injecting the fillers uh, because uh, it's the muscular layer and uh, it's surrounding aponeurosis uh, above and below which various vital structures they lie. Uh, these are the important ligaments of the face. 
uh, and you can see if, uh, starting from the orbital area like the orbicularis retaining ligament and uh, which laxity gives rise to drooping and the baggy eyelids and then comes the zygomatic ligaments again these ligaments they demark and they make boundaries of the face so that they can prevent the uh, unnecessary spillage of the filler into different parts of the face uh, now starting from the vital structures uh, first i'm discussing the nervous supply of the face face uh, and the, uh, the scalp area they are mainly supplied uh, by the branches of the trigeminal nerve and uh, uh, branches of the facial nerve. Uh, the uh, division you can see on the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, in the facial nerve, it gives mainly branches like the temporal branch, zygomatic, buccal, mandibular, and the cervical branch. And similarly, the trigeminal nerve, it also gives different branches like the supra and the infratrochlear, supra and infraorbital nerve, zygomatic or temporal or temporal nerve. This nervous supply that is also important uh, because you have to give the nerve blocks uh, before the fillers and uh, it's usually the less area or the less uh, concerned area as compared to the vascular structures because they are usually present very deep they are if the, you wrongly inject the injection is usually very painful alarming and uh, uh, secondly they can be felt as the cord like structures over the bone. These are the branches of the facial nerve. We can see their course and uh, also the branches of the trigeminal nerve. This is the vascular supply of the face, uh, present uh, the, the, the lateral view of the vascular supply of the face. And the, the, uh, the face uh, vascular supply is mainly by the two branches of the common carotid external and the internal carotid artery. The external carotid artery, that is the main supplier of the face. And uh, uh, it uh, gives different uh, branches on the face. And the uh, uh, internal carotid artery, it also gives multiple branches and it also supplies and there is a, a lot of communication and anastomosis at different levels between the, these two arteries and you, you can see the uh, the facial artery it, it is emerging from the uh, external carotid artery at the level of the mandible and it is curving upwards and giving the superior labial artery and then passing giving a serpentine course it passes as the lateral nasal artery and uh, continues as the angular artery up to the medial inner canthus of the eye and uh, during its course uh, uh, the, the few areas they are very much uh, notorious that you should not give fillers in that areas especially and there are also different uh, anastomoses at the lip level and i will also discuss area wise as well uh, these are the uh, venous supply of the face. Uh, the, uh, the veins that are also important because uh, there is a risk of uh, thromboembolism and there are also different sites of vascular accidents that the embolus and the uh, incidence of pulmonary embolism when wrongly injecting and involving the vein. And uh, you already know that usually there are uh, two collateral veins that are accompanying one artery and the course is almost parallel to the arteries with variations as individual uh, variations present varying from person to person. Again, the, uh, the different uh, veins, their emerging points, uh, they are almost the same. You can see uh, the emerging points and the fixed points, they are mainly for the nerves or in the vessels, but veins usually also follow the same course. Uh, this is the uh, natural uh, uh, skull view. As you can see, that there is concavity present on the forehead and the convexity on the uh, concavity present on the temple area and convexity present on the mm. forehead area. And as the uh, soft tissue, it regresses with the passage of time that becomes prominent and gives rise to the aging appearance. Again, the layers which I have already discussed. Uh, this uh, now I'm mainly concerning the uh, upper face area. For ease, you can divide the face into three areas: upper, middle, and the lower face area. The upper face area uh, that is important because you are uh, considering the forehead, the temple, and the orbital area. 
and uh, uh, these area and the glabella as well and uh, uh, th these are a lot of uh, uh, important structures again in the glabella and in the temple area for example in the temple area you can see the superficial temporal artery then there are the interior and the posterior deep temporal arteries present in this area as well and then on the medial side of the eye you can see the supraorbital and the supratrochlear artery uh, at this point uh, you have to remember the super uh, cilia muscle uh, notch is present at this area and uh, you have to avoid you have to stay lateral to this area and avoiding the medial area because it contains mostly these branches of the internal carotid like supraorbital and supratrochlear <laughs> Uh, this is the again a clear view of the temple area and uh, you can see uh, at this level the uh, not only it's important that which structures are present it is also important that there is communication present in few in many areas of the face when you inject as the internal and external carotid artery they are communicating with each other so even if you are injecting in the temple then uh, as it is communicating with the uh, zygomatic temporal artery that is branch of the internal carotid then it can communicate and give rise to the embolism inside the eye and the ophthalmic artery so uh, uh, you can for the ease remember the preauricular area the preauricular area that is the fixed point for the temporal artery superficial temporal again this is the frontal branch of the superficial temporal artery uh, then there, uh, this is the glabellar area. Glabella uh, is mostly the site where you inject the, you correct with the botulinum toxin, but there are still correcting with it the fixed uh, wrinkles and the fixed uh, the aging changes which are present that can be corrected with the fillers. But uh, in the glabellar area, it is strictly uh, uh, advised that you should remain strictly intradermal because otherwise it mostly th that is said that uh, uh, you can stay supraperiosteal. It's fine with it, but again, there is a lot of risk with it. You can see the intercanthal vein as well in this area. Similarly, uh, in, in the area of, in the orbital area, there are the superior medial palpebral artery and the inferior medial palpebral artery. Again, you have to, the best thing is you have to remain near the bone uh, and you can, you may feel the bone and then inject. You have to be quite deep in this area. Again, avoid the superficial injection in this site. Similarly, in the temple, you can be uh, in the supra or uh, periosteal area that is usually considered the best. Again, you can give in the hypodermis. So, uh, this you can see if uh, we are coming down the normal layers of the skin. Again, this is the SMAS layer, the superficial musculoepineurotic space that is present below the uh, epineurosis of the muscles that usually contains the superficial and the deep branch of the supraorbital artery and uh, that is present just around the frontalis muscle epineurosis and then is the supratrochlear artery that is present a bit, uh, bit medial to it. Uh, then again there is the nervous supply that is also a repetition you can see the emerging points of the supraorbital nerve and the supratrochlear nerve and the deep branch of the uh, supraorbital uh, nerve that is also present in this area auriculotemporal nerve just in front of the uh, in, in the preauricular area and the, in the temple uh, temporal area there is a zygomatico temporal nerve uh, this is the when you inject the filler uh, quite superficially again you can see it's quite dangerous because uh, a, a lot of collaterals and a lot of uh, branches of the supraorbital artery they are they lie in this area of the glabella this is uh, a better technique uh, that uh, uh, you go very deep and uh, uh, you can reach the bone and uh, stay at the supraperiosteal area and inject avoiding all the dangerous structures and you can see uh, this is the point where there is the superciliary notch and uh, that is a safe area you are not going medial to it you stay uh, a bit lateral to it so this is the uh, different uh, areas where you can inject the filler again 
uh, you can see uh, that we are avoiding uh, the main area. Either we are uh, remaining very superficial or we are going at the supra periosteal level. When you remain very superficial, then you can e e even easily feel or you can see that the cannula or the needle that is easily felt on the skin. Uh, this is the orbital area. Again, you know that uh, the uh, orbital septum is there and it, it, the laxity of different septa that occurs that there can be uh, obvious uh, uh, the septal fat drooping. Again, different layers at the uh, orbital level. Uh, there, there is the orbicularis oculi muscle and orbital septum and the inferior orbital fat. This area is important because it contains the super, uh, uh, the soof layer and the uh, fat layer and the, the roof layer, retro orbicular ocular fat and the supra orbital orbicularis ocular fat. This is the place you can inject the filler and this is the fat area that is considered safe. And this is for volumizing because with aging as uh, the hollow orbital, uh, the hollow orbits uh, that appearance occurs. So you can inject for volumizing this area. When you have to volumize any area, you should remember that the superficial injections, they cannot volumize. They are mainly meant for contouring purpose. But when you have to volumize, volumize the area, then it's better that you go deep and remain at the supraperiosteal area that will increase your volume. So uh, again, uh, the glabellar and the orbital area, you can see there is also a lot of anastomosis occurring at this point between the angular artery, which uh, the facial artery, it continues as the angular artery when it reaches the medial canthus of the eye. And at this level, it anastomoses with the dorsal nasal artery. Dorsal nasal artery is the, the branch of the internal uh, carotid artery. And uh, at this point, uh, again, a little mistake can, again, a little spillage can lead to very easily embolus going inside the ophthalmic artery. So uh, this is the area for injecting the infraorbital area. Again, this area becomes hollow uh, with the age and you can know the uh, formation of the uh, tear trough and the nasogeal fold area. Uh, this is the area uh, in for uh, applying the nerve block. You can see uh, always remember and you may mark the fixed points of the uh, emerging emerging points, sorry, the emerging points. These are the emerging points of the supratrochlear and supraorbital nerve, and again the temporal nerve. This is the point of emergence, emerging point of the supraorbital nerve. Uh, this is uh, for the purpose of uh, uh, showing you that aging process. The patient is asked to look down, then that will uh, accentuate the hollowing of the temple area and the forehead area. So uh, this is again the uh, little part of the area which I have discussed quite in detail. Now the mid face area uh, you can see that uh, just uh, there, there are the maxillary artery. The maxillary artery again the uh, facial artery it uh, the external carotid artery terminates into the maxillary artery and this is the maxillary artery and uh, it, it lies deep inside the just under the muscular layer you can and uh, it is yeah, this you can see that this is the fine technique for the temporal area now this is the mid face area you can see the richest anastomosis site between the internal and external carotid artery at the nose area you can see that uh, there are a lot of communication superior labial artery giving the columellar branches and they are communicating with the lateral nasal artery branch of the facial artery Again, uh, at the level of the orbital area, the same communication which I have previously discussed. And then there is a serpentine course of the facial artery. This is the area that is mostly considered the red zone for the vascular structures. So this, uh, these are the aging changes for which I have discussed the, applying the fillers in the orbital area, the sunken eye and the retarsal roll area. Again, there you can see uh, the ligaments and the uh, fat compartments which are giving support to the infraorbital area. There occurs festooning of uh, the skin and the orbital fat with aging. 
so uh, apart from the angular artery angular vein also lies in this area you have to be very careful both the inferior valvular artery but also the inferior valvular vein that are usually following uh, the same course along with them and uh, the, again the mid face area uh, the, there is the infraorbital uh, nerve and the superior medial malar fat area that is very important though the mid face area is important not only because the vessels they are passing because there is the parotid duct that also comes in this area injecting the filler into this duct can lead to the formation of the parotid abscess you can easily mark uh, this point uh, the digital point of the face by drawing a simple uh, perpendicular line from the uh, um, uh, infra auricular area towards the uh, uh, alar area of the nose and you have to avoid this area especially the midpoint of it at this point also the facial artery it lies in front of the masseter muscle and it comes below the zygomatic muscle this is the proper technique again you have to remain very superficial or you go very deep this is for the mid face area for the cheek hollow again this is the these are the branches you can see the facial artery branches giving into the superior labial artery and then the inferior labial artery and the ready toward branch of the facial artery these are the nasal labial fold area the nasal labial fold area uh, that uh, previously uh, people used to inject uh, the nasal labial fold in three parts the upper middle and the lower part and the uh, upper part you no know, it is advised that should be injected very deep first uh, it used to be injected very superficially so this is the nasal labial fold area different structures you can see the rhizoids muscle and the winding portion of the facial artery just below it and the buccal fat pads and the somatic muscles so uh, that that i was uh, telling you the subdermal injection is the best for the tear trough area and then this deep injection that is better for the pre-zygomatic area and the deep injection for the upper nasal labial fold uh, this is uh, the point you have to stay uh, 15 mm lateral and 15 mm uh, uh, superior uh, and lateral to this point and you should avoid this area again this is the repetition you can you can see different the buccal lobes zygomatic small major muscle temporal lobe and all the buccal fat pad areas again for injecting cheek area you can see uh, the hollow so nose uh, um, that is also involved in the mid face uh, rose is, nose is also site for the most anastomosis and the richest site for the uh, vascular structures and the best uh, point to inject the nose is usually strictly in the midline if you have to give the uh, uh, volume to the tip of the nose or you have to correct any deformity any hump of the nose the best area is the typical midline area because the dorsal nasal artery on both sides lies a bit away from the midline Uh, different group of muscles are uh, present uh, around the nose and the uh, paranasal area again the angular artery and the dorsal nasal artery communicating the, this is the columellar branches of the superior labial artery this is also a very common site for uh, skin necrosis and also reaching the ophthalmic artery and creating blindness if you inject uh, with poor technique. this is the structure of the nose that uh, you can even stay uh, just above the uh, nose at the level in front of the cartilages this is the technique proper technique for injecting the nose for augmentation so the lower face area comes the marionette line marionette marionette line uh, the also kind of common indication for the fillers and then is the labio mandibular fold and uh, this is the lip area uh, the normal lip you know the desired contour is usually the inverted lips that are present and you have to be very concerned in this area because the best pain is that you remain at the submucous level you avoid the uh, superior labial artery and the best thing is to avoid the exact mid area of the lips uh then just below at uh, reaching the, the chin level you can see the mental nerve the labial glands the inferior labial artery even the submental arteries present in this area this is the area for applying the nerve block this is again uh, the fixed point for the emergence of the mandibular submental nerve and uh, 
this is again the repetition superior labial artery inferior labial artery in the fish there is a lot of variations in the course uh, even multiple at multiple points the facial artery has a lot of variation in this area and this is the point easy again the antigonial point that is present at the level of the mandible and the r point that is present at the alar level uh, an oblique line uh, and this is the uh, point you have to avoid because this is the point mostly the point of bifurcation and the point of the serpentine course of the facial artery again keep a simple rule and uh, keep a safe distance 15 mm above and this is the retruder chin again one of the indication for the fillers in the chin area you can inject uh, the volume loss in the chin in this area this is for uh, the purpose of uh, uh, volume in the area of the chin again the same area different muscles so uh, uh this is mainly uh, the last slide the, the slide of most concern is that even if you inject in different areas of the face like in temporal area in the chin area in the malar area in the orbital area or in the glabellar area as there is a lot of communication between the uh, external and internal carotid artery branches embolus in this area can easily reach the eye and cause blindness which is the most devastating complication of the filler uh, again the super uh, uh, one thing i missed is that the superior labial artery area again uh, this is said to be uh, also a very bad area for uh, filler injection. You have to be very careful in this area while injecting because any injection uh, in the superior labial artery, there is less communication, less anastomosis, and uh, that can easily lead to necrosis and further uh, ophthalmic complication. But in inferior labial artery, because there is a lot of communication with the submental artery, that may uh, sometimes uh, keep you safe as well. So. Uh, it's a blind procedure even if you uh, learn a lot of facial anatomy still uh, you cannot be very sure that you are avoiding any structure so always you have to retrogradely push your plunge your needle and you can see if you can see any blood aspirated then you have to avoid this area because the facial anatomy every structure differs from person to person thank you so much.